Welcome back to Louisville Live this morning. Carl Truman is here, the injury lawyer, like he is on Tuesdays to answer your question. We're taking phone calls right now. Call us if you have a question for Carl. The number is 502-276-2118. Carl's here to answer your questions. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great How are you? Here. Great to be back again this uh, sunny uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, <laughs> right. Liquid sunshine. Mm -hmm. And that's the sunny side of Carl Truman, the injury lawyer. He thinks every day is... Uh, Blessed with sunshine. <laughs> gotta, <laughs> gotta keep positive. <laughs> two seven six two one one eight is the legal line if you'd like to call Carl with a question. And uh, first of all, just talk to us about your practice areas, Carl, because you really cover the gamut. Well, our practice is limited to personal injury litigation, and mm -hmm. what that means is that you know I do all types of areas where someone becomes injured because mm -hmm. of someone else's negligence. Yes. You know what I don't do like divorces and wills and criminal cases because I believe that you know the law is so complex these days that it's really tough to do everything yes uh, the the uh, bar rules bar association rules don't let us say we specialize mm -hmm. but really you know we do concentrate although I am a board certified uh, civil trial specialist by the National Board of Trial Advocacy which shows that I have actually tried cases uh, but you know so because because of the law being so complex in so many different areas, so we focus on areas of uh, personal injury, negligence, whether it's automobile accidents or someone be getting hurt on the job, applying for social security disability. Uh, I even do maritime claims uh, representing barge workers uh, on okay. the Ohio River. And uh, premises liability, you know, where someone is falls on someone else's property. I've had cases where uh, they at an apartment building or you know a, someone's residence or railing gave way and they a fell. A construction and became, site? We actually yes. have a mailbag oh, about okay. that. We'll, yes, we'll get to construction that in a sites. That, yeah. that can be uh, fairly complicated areas dealing with construction sites. Before we get to any of that, will you just tell us one thing? How do you become board certified as, as an attorney a in a specific area? Because you know there are meteorological certifications, there are medical certifications, mm -hmm. you've got a right. legal certification in, a, in an area that you're not allowed to say you're specializing in, but right. you have a special uh, acknowledgement and certification. Special credential. Uh, well, it's just like if you were to, uh, if you had a, a needed heart surgery, yeah. or if you had a, a broken bone, you know, ra rather than going to your family practice doctor, you would want to go to an orthopedic surgeon who's board certified. Yes. You know, so mm -hmm. that doctor has gone through an extra level of training and mm -hmm. testing to show that he is competent in, you know, that specialty. Uh, although, and medical people can say specialty. Yes. Right. Uh, but so, like a, a medical doctor that is board certified as an orthopedic surgeon or a heart surgeon. So it's a, it's kind of the same principle in the legal field. Uh, there, while the individual states, for example, Kentucky and Indiana, don't recognize they don't uh, board certify in specialties. But they do recognize there is a national organization called the National Board of Trial Advocacy. Yes. Uh, NBTA. You mm -hmm. can look them up on Google, and it shows all of, all of the uh, process that you have to go through. Yes. But basically, it's a very extensive process to go through through the the National Board of Trial Advocacy, uh, where, uh, for example, you have to have actually tried a certain number of cases. You actually have to have spent a certain number of days in the courtroom, mm -hmm. which there are some lawyers on TV who. Uh, have never seen a courtroom, but yet they mm. accept in their commercials. Like mm. Tom Cruise and a few good men, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so this is what a courtroom looks like, he yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there, and there are there are lawyers on television who fit that description. So, uh, you know, so you actually have to have done that. You actually have to you have to sit for a day long written exam. It's kind of like a a uh, another a mini bar exam. It's yes. a day long written test where you actually, but it's focused on civil trial procedure and rules of evidence, that type of thing. Yeah. And you have to submit a written brief. Um, I actually sat on the uh, committee that actually reviewed other attorneys' briefs. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, you have to submit, submit a trial brief, and then uh, you have to have to have done a certain number of depositions. And then you actually have to have recommendations from three other lawyers, one of whom you actually opposed in court. There you oh, go. Wow. And so... Uh, yeah, that, that can That's be. That's the best kind of yeah. recommendation to have, isn't it? Somebody yeah. who you've actually uh, been up against, toe mm -hmm. to toe. Yeah, and then uh, recommendations from judges. Yeah, that uh, you have to. Uh, uh, they submit confidential reviews. So it's a it's a pretty intensive process. I think uh, the numbers uh, the last I saw as far as uh, 
of all attorneys, it's like less than 2% of yeah. attorneys that have this qualification. Excellent. Well, we're glad you're one of them. Absolutely. And we have Thanks. you here. <laughs> to answer questions from to the mailbag. To answer bag. questions. Taking phone calls, 276-2118. A. We do have a mailbag. Uh, Tar, you were mentioning this. Sarah from St. Matthews. Mm -hmm. uh, she's talking about construction sites, yes. Carl. She says, who is to blame if someone gets injured on a construction site? Is it the fault of the construction company or the company having the work done or who? Sounds a little bit confusing. Well, that's a great question. We could probably spend all day talking about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, there's basically, let's say that you're a worker and you work at a construction site. Okay. And you get hurt. Well, one of the questions that we look at is, well, how did you get hurt? Uh, first of all, you may have a worker's compensation claim. Yes. And that even gets complicated because let's say that you have a company that uh, is that you're employed in Kentucky, but they have a job over in Indiana, and they go have a, a job site in Indiana, and you get hurt. Well, is your workers' compensation claim in Kentucky or Indiana? Uh, hmm. So we want to look at which law would be more favorable to be able to file that claim. Right. So that's one thing that we look at, and we look at well, how did you get hurt? Were there, uh, was it a, another contractor? Was it someone else? Was it a, what's called a third party? Was it someone passing through? Was it a coworker? All of those things are very complicated questions because if it's a coworker, you can't sue a coworker. Hmm. So your recovery would be limited workers comp. But let's say there's somebody else on the job site that's driving a truck through and, and happens to hit you or something, cause hmm. some, some harm. Well, then you may have what not only the job site injury for workers' compensation, but then also a claim against that other company, what's called a third-party claim, mm -hmm. to be able to recover from both avenues. So, uh, and then also looking at various OSHA regulations, and you know, and then we, if if there are.